Hey, happy holidays. Um, just a real quick video here to uh, just see what's happened in the charts we looked at last time since then. Start off with this Bitcoin chart here. I don't remember exactly where it was. Suspect it was somewhere down here under the two hour cloud, perhaps. Uh, yeah, because it was the 12th or something. Oh. Yeah, since then it bottomed out uh, around 31.27 at GDAX, 31.25. Made its way up to 42.30. And on this chart here anyway, it's, uh, I got support, short-term support at a 1.27 extension based on move from 42.30 down to this little peak here. And so it just so happened it topped off exactly that peak it recently, came back down to the support. It's had a decent little recovery since then, but you know, not necessarily decent unless it continues. Um, circulating market cap, 30, for the live coin watch, 24 hour volume, decreased a little bit from yesterday, it was over 10k, I mean 10 billion. Uh, so anyway, let's go into the charts. Personalized Bitcoin index. The 450 day bullish divergence. I just extended that line and it's sitting on that support. Uh, not too much more to say there other than perhaps, you know, well, okay, for one, the RSI is pretty much right here at the same level this long term triangle close so there should be a support there to be concerned with right where it dropped off there too so if the rsi can stay above there i'm uh pleased for now and i assume that probably will coincide with that last you know the crypto watch chart you know staying above that level basically um, Stoke RSI down here. Should have support hopefully here at the 80 level where this was resistance to. So overall, these indicators look pretty good to me on the day chart. On the weekly chart, Stoke RSI is primed pretty much as good as it possibly could be. I mean, not necessarily, but I mean, it doesn't get much better than that, really, as far as I can tell. Uh, Obviously, the one-week MACD has a little ways to go. If I draw a line here, I'm curious. Uh, so on the weekly chart, we would have that resistance to contend with in the near future. Hopefully, it keeps going up. So where's that put it on the day chart? Uh, support, so never mind. <laughs> I mean, so that that could be if the white line fails uh, about where it goes down to. I'll leave that there for that reason only. I don't expect that to happen based on what I'm seeing so far and what's going on in uh, the whole world economy and especially the American indices and the US dollar currency index, which I'll get into in a minute. 
but could happen, obviously. U.S. dollar tether, I haven't looked at it in a little while now, but it seems to have reached parity quite a while ago and remained there. This analysis, it's not pretty, I know, but uh, <laughs> I did this a long time ago as a, as a new, but I just left it there. I watched it play out. I haven't touched anything. I may have added a line. Uh, but no, I think this resistance line, yeah, I, I made that one back in a year ago. So this hasn't been touched in a year. And I've been posting a lot on Twitter about, you know, when it reaches important resistance. And the fact that when it reaches the dollar, it should be good. And so far, that's proven to be correct. I honestly still expect it. I mean, it looks good still. Uh, get the one hour stoked weighted down here. The, the RSI is good. The price is green right now. Above this Fibonacci support, it's already bounced off several times. Like, I honestly, I expect this to get up to, to do things that it did last year, probably up to these lines, essentially. You know, it being the longest running stable coin, the US dollar likely crashing soon. Not crashing necessarily, but declining in value at a much quicker rate than most people are used to. Uh, yeah, these stable coins are a little crazy in the meantime. So use the all tether included, especially now that they, they whatever they you can trade them one to one on their website. And, uh, oh yeah, the main thing I, I didn't realize that uh, until recently the Bitfinex market, the Bit, um, the BTC USD market at Bitfinex is now actual USD as of like a month or two ago, because they started trading USDT. They added a market for USDT against the dollar, finally, and margin trading as well in that market. Uh, so these are these all these really good developments um, that kind of messes up my personalized Bitcoin index chart a little bit, I guess, because I, I had been um, multiplying the Bitfinex BTC USD price by the exchange rate of used all tether on Kraken to fix that particular exchange's price. But now apparently, ever since a month or two ago, that's redundant because um, it's actual USD already. So anyway, that because, because the exchange rate of BTC USD at Bitfinex is, represents the exchange rate of BTC, you know, the USD quote, Represents actual USD. Anyway. <laughs> uh, plus, that adds more legitimacy to the whole USD system. Being able to, you know, bank it straight into US dollar right from the exchange, vice versa. So it'll, it'll add extra buying pressure when the price does go down. People that want to get in on that, on the margin trading, short term, you know, f volatility. So overall, I think that margin trading will add uh, stability almost. Um, not saying it won't st st uh, be stable at above a dollar. That could happen. You know, generally stable like a dollar, ten, fifteen, twenty. That wouldn't surprise me at all. Uh, all throughout next year, for example, and then maybe once everything starts working its way up again you know, with the economy and uh, however long that takes, maybe stable coins come back down, and test a dollar, and <laughs> maybe lose ground to the dollar again someday, but. I, I never was worried about U.S. Dollar Tether. I wrote an article on Steemit about it, along where I participated in writing an article for IDC Inc. I, I don't remember if it, 
I think all I did was make a chart that was looking at uh, the correlation between the, the uh, long term pump and market cap of US dollar tether uh, being probably explained by the whole Bitfinex, uh, sorry, BitConnect collapse. Obviously, Bitcoin came down along with that too, so that's part of it as well. But before Bitcoin came down, I think I noticed, yeah, Bitcoin, BitConnect was like, you know, straight down in market cap. In the meantime, US dollar tether went up and everybody was starting to question it around that point, you know, more so than ever since I had been in crypto anyway. So that's when I was looking real close. Anyway, I wanted to make this quick, so a couple more real quick. I won't go into the altcoins this time. I'll save that for maybe for tomorrow or sometime real soon. I'll be making more videos now that I have an actual studio quality microphone and uh, it's not a pain in the ass to hook up my phone and deal with all the notifications <laughs> getting in the way. So the other two charts we looked at last time. This one just takes into account Bitcoin and US dollar currency index. Um, in the short term here, I'm a little disappointed it didn't stay above the 382, but it is encouraging to see this candlestick pattern right here. Uh, the fact that this wick did not go below yesterday's wick and it only bitcoin only needs to go up like 30 bucks for this candle to turn green Thirty, fifty bucks and this one that takes into account bitcoin gold and the u.s dollar currency index just wanted to point out basically this resistance we've been feeling with bitcoin and as well as gold, I haven't looked at that specifically lately uh, in the last day, but um, you know, it's, it's, it did beat this resistance real quick a couple of days ago. Uh, it is only one point one one point four and four resistance. You know, it's a couple different ones. It's also six one eight, I think, too. So it's a long term six one eight resistance as well. So. Anyway, the 1.4 and 4 is not as significant as these two, in my opinion, as far as the short-term uh, Fibonacci extension I have drawn. The longer-term Fibonacci retracement, uh, the 618 is pretty key. So, but once it definitively breaks that 618, that's a really good sign. So, it's got to get up here, probably test it as... Uh, Reclaim it as support, test it as support, and then make its way up. Maybe it just blasts off, but a short squeeze of Bitcoin. That could definitely happen. Been waiting for it for months and months. Uh, somewhat given up on it, but. The other thing is the MACD. That's, uh, so the reason why we'd be expecting the resistance, obviously, is this uh, resistance zone here. And the MACD. On the day chart crossing through the center line but still looking quite bullish as far as you know uh the signal line being over drawing a blank with the actual terms now the macd line <laughs> being over the signal Not necessarily looking like it's going to pinch yet at all. The RSI looks better than the RSI, the personalized Bitcoin index chart. Obvious support line here on the uh, daily chart as I scroll out. Bounced off it there a couple of times, right there, you know, pretty clear. Right here is the key zone for this chart as far as support and resistance. It's pinched in between. The 
here in Classics moving. Let's take a look at that real quick. No bonus. Oh. I haven't opened up my Ethereum Classic chart in a long time. But just first glance right here. It looks like it's due for a 43% pump. Uh, in the very near future. At minimum. Like, I'm not, you know, not saying buy it after while it's pumping or whatever, but. It is, uh, it has just broken this month long resistance recently. Um, in the shorter term, most significant resistance is about seven and a half percent up. Maybe you want to be a little more conservative, more like five. But uh, yeah, I mean, I at these levels, it's almost not worth bothering for moves like that to me. Like, you know, I, I for example, I was in, I sold Pivx at the top the other day, not not top top, but like at the short term top. Um, what was I gonna even say? Oh yeah, and then I, I got Neo, and you know I got a five percent profit with it right away. But I'm like, that ain't shit. Like, it, same with Ontology. They both pumped, and I was in profit. And I could have bought back Pivx now with that profit cheaper, significantly cheaper. But instead, I was like, you know, it's not worth it. Hold it. <laughs> and of course, that was the wrong decision. So I'm not saying make that decision, but because these little 5 10% gains aren't worth it to me, you know, I'm going for these longer term 5 20%, 40% pumps that are inevitable as far as I'm concerned, and the vast majority of these good coins. So Ethereum Classic's kind of sort of one of them. I've been bullish on it for, you know, generally bullish on it. It was a little disappointing when the whole team was dissolved, whatever the whole, with the bear market, but I bet they'll be back. And it's open source, as long as the coin works and they can build on it, it doesn't really matter anyway. Coin basically just solicit it, you know. And the stock markets real quick, uh, individually, I'll go into those. So the Dow Jones, this is a Fibonacci extension based on this bearish harmonic pattern that I that eyeballed a long time ago, back here in April, May. Um, I just not realized how perfect this was as far as basically hitting the 1.618 extension and now bouncing up to the 1.27. I already noticed it with the S and P. It was, it was a similar situation. All right. So based on that, I don't know if I already showed the. Yeah, I think I did show the sum of the American indices minus the price of Bitcoin. No, that's at key resistance. Um, yeah, so the S&P actually dipped below the 1.618. Similar setup. I had a bearish harmonic pattern, which I don't know why it's not here anymore. And then I had the length of that, the XA leg of that pattern. So if you don't know harmonic patterns, I'll show you how to. It's either like an impulse leg down is the XA leg. And then B has to be a certain percentage up from XA or it has to be a retrace a certain percentage. It qualifies a certain pattern. And C goes back down to, to A or back up to A, depending on the situation, a certain percentage more sometimes depending on the pattern and then d uh certain percentage usually about 
0.886 is common. So that was basically the pattern I've been watching, or one of the two on the S&P, actually. Um, yeah, where the heck is it? Where that? <laughs> it's weird they're not there anymore. They were always there. I had two highlighted. Uh, there is, I have a public chart anyway, if you really want to see it. Search for two bearish harmonic patterns on the S&P or something. So that's the gist of a harmonic pattern. It's, you got the, uh, whether or not it qualifies as a pattern, it's all Fibonacci based. So once you learn Fibonacci's extensions and retracements, uh, it's really not that much of a stretch to think you might be able to uh, get good at spotting these harmonic patterns. Uh, it only took me a week or two to just kind of, uh, you know, memorize s certain key uh, retracement levels and, and you know, what they look like. Now, unfortunately, most of the harmonic patterns I found in the crypto market have not played out like the ones in the traditional market. Uh, but I have found quite a few in the crypto market, such as in PIVX. Uh, so I'll just show that one real quick, because that one hasn't really uh, done too horrible. I had several before this one, too, and it failed pretty miserably. Alright, so bullish crab pattern. You know, like I said, XA was the you had the impulse up, sixty one point eight retracement down. I think it's between three eight two and eight eight six has to be C, and then D has to meet a couple qualifications or at least one, whatever the situation is. So this is the price reversal zone, point D, uh, basically. Price reversal zone, more specifically, is defined by like a couple key levels um, defined that, that help define D. But uh, so since it reached the PRZ, it bottomed out here at the long-term 0.886 retracement that I had drawn. Uh, and it seems to be finding support, hopefully here, very soon, at, in this key resistance, uh, in this key support zone over the last several months. Unfortunately, this unlikely drop happened. The 55% here I was referring to was Monero. It was, it was a chart from my friend that I forgot to delete this when I posted this. All right, so anyway, the S&P in the short term here did worse than the Dow. Recovered not as strong, at least when you're looking at it as far as just the harmonic patterns and the Fibonacci extensions based on the harmonic patterns are concerned. Uh, it might not be the case when you look at it percentage-wise, for example, but whoops. Anyway, so it closed here just below the 1.414 extension of that move. So it's going to have resistance there. If it does break up above that, maybe it hits the it hits 250-ish again. And that's ultimately where it goes down from tomorrow. I do not expect this dead cat bounce to last much longer than it did. Uh, it might perhaps go long enough for this S&P four hour chart to uh, MACD to pinch maybe the four hour still to go up here again or top off around 80 maybe very bearish in the stock market still like it was on the <laughs> so close to being officially in a bear market 20% um, and as far as I'm concerned like that already happened I think let's take a look real quick also so much for my quick video, I'm sorry. Too much shit to say about this shit going on.
I didn't get into the politics about it yet. Man, I could go on for an hour or two about that shit, but... Uh... Fuck am I looking for? NDX? Plus... Yeah, sorry, so this is just... The American Indices has a collective... I don't think I've shown this on any videos yet. Alright, so... Yeah, as a collective... From very tippy top... To the absolute bottom... Just over 20%. So, for a moment, before this... Bullshit dead cat bounce. The American indices as a whole, as a sum, as a collective, whatever the word would be, <laughs> all of the above, probably fine. Anyway, they were in a bear market. They bounced pretty much perfectly off this long term 0.236 extension. But you know, when you're trading Bitcoin, for example, and it had a crazy rise in the short term, something that looks whatever, like this, only this looks horrible for how a bullish chart should look. I, I can't explain it, but to me, it just doesn't look right. <laughs> There's so much bearish pressure all the way up, it seems, yeah, more so than it would be if it was actually bullish. Maybe I'm just crazy. So, in the longer term, as I pointed out on Twitter, if this chart acts like Bitcoin did this year, for example, we know, I know stock market plays out over a longer period of time, but this might take two or three years, whatever. But at the same time, it did crash faster than Bitcoin did lately. Like, it, it came from its all-time high, uh, you know, 2018 high, it, was, it erased all its gains quicker than Bitcoin did. So there's that, too. But anyway, take everything into consideration. I just watch it happen. I don't make this predictions necessarily other than, you know, I'm really bearish on this or bullish on that. Sometimes I do make a little more, you know, okay, this is going down to the 618 and it'll be almost perfect. But, you know, I'm, don't, <laughs> don't trade based on those calls, on anybody's calls like that, necessarily. Do your own, learn yourself. And if you need the help learning that I am not providing yet, like I'm not, you know, I haven't necessarily gone over, oh, this is how to do a Fibonacci extension. And because uh, I'm, I'm geared more towards the, I guess the more advanced ones, just keeping an eye on it for now. Um, with it, uh. But that might, that's going to change now that I have studio equipment and whatnot. I'm going to make, in the future, crypto guidance, you know, technical analysis, mini courses, or whatever. But in the meantime, high altitude investing and Carl the Moon. Uh, IL2 Investing is the one I learned from, Carl the Moons, I've, I've been watching him most of the year. Uh, and he makes very accurate short-term predictions. And we're on the same page as far as I'm very bearish on the you know, stock market, the fiat currencies, and you know, he goes into a lot of depth about that situation. So anyway, if it acts like Bitcoin over the course of, say, a year or two, we're looking at probably at least another 38, 40% to hit the 618. All right, that, that would be a conservative bearish move for me. Uh, and then more likely you're looking at like 50 to 60% down as a whole. 
I will start getting interested somewhere around this zone. As far as if I have some crypto profits by then, hopefully, <laughs> I'll consider, you know, taking long positions on the actual indices themselves at that point. Now, maybe before that point, based on my other charts, if, you know, I see something in those ones, you know, but anyway, I'm going to end it here for now. I blabbed it quite a bit. I went into all the charts I think I meant to to begin with. Uh, if you see this video and you have any requests for next time, I'll gladly, if it's on TradingView, pull it up here and, uh, oh yeah, look at this indicator, by the way, too. That MACD is bleh. Despite what happened today, the daily MACD, uh, For some reason, this one doesn't even seem to have up. Oh, that's why. I'm on the weekly. Anyway, have any requests? Let me know. Uh, follow me on Twitter uh, for the most real time updates. I have a Steam It page, it's all down in the description. Um, IDC Inc. has a Steam. Uh, a, Twitter page and a Facebook page. But my Twitter page is going to be where most of the stuff stems from, at least in the short term now, until like people come back to IDC Inc. as a, well, as it really gets going again in the bull market. So my Twitter page is the best place to go for all the, you know, real time updates. Obviously, like I've already said, probably twice. I'll shut the fuck up now. Have a good day. Happy New Year if I don't make a video by then. Take it easy.